If we look at the state of the environment today, then there is hardly anything to tolerate. Who can tolerate the quality of air we breathe? Who can accept the state of our rivers? Who can tolerate the rising temperature of the planet? Global temperature today is about a degree higher compared to pre-industrial era, and at the rate the world is emitting greenhouse gases, we will reach 1.5 degrees by 2025. In fact, the Sunita I know cannot tolerate the way we are managing our environment. Neither can she tolerate the environmentalism of the rich. Her intolerance to the Western, especially the US politics on climate change, is legendary. So I'm sure when Sunita speaks today, she will give you her own reasons why she named the book so. We have the author of the book, Sunita Narayan, Director General of CSC and editor of Down to Earth magazine. When I wrote this article on Luton's Delhi, I call it Luton Delhi. I wrote it because I was angry and that when the smart city came to the idea, it was a good idea and we had to do a lot of work for our cities. But you put the place of your city and your place is clean, which I call it a gated community, and I wrote in the article that this is the biggest gated community of India. और आपने डिसाइड किया आप इसी के अंदर पैसा लगाएंगे और इसको ज्यादा साफ करेंगे और आप बेसिकली ये नहीं समझ रहे हैं इसके और बाकी के भारत के बीच में कितना अंतर होता जा रहा है और इस चीज को जो एक लुटायन दिल्ली से जो निकल के आती है कि ये एक वर्ल्ड व्यू होता जा रहा है कि हम लोग अपनी जगह साफ कर ले� in my backyard, there will not be any waste disposal in my backyard. In Lutayan Delhi, the amount of waste that comes from the Lutayan Delhi, the amount of waste that comes from the Lutayan Delhi, the amount of waste that comes from the Lutayan Delhi. In Lutayan Delhi, where the amount of waste is for 30% of the land for the land, the amount of waste is very good. I go to the Lodi Garden, I go to the Lodi Garden, so don't understand that I carry it that it is very bad. But it is a symbol that the amount of waste is for 30% of the land, of land area is under greenery. जो हमारे कहीं भी कोई सवाल ही नहीं है कि आप देख सकें बाकी के दिल्ली में इस दिल्ली में आपको एक बाग मिलेगा ही नहीं और आपने एक जगह जहां आपने इतनी जमीन है आपने ये भी नहीं किया कि मैं अपना पानी अपना वेस्ट अटलिस्ट इतना तो हैंडल करूंगा कि पानी जितना ही मेरी जरूरत है मैं रेन वाटर हार्वेस्टिंग से करूंगा जितना मेरा वेस्ट है मैं यहीं पर ट्रीट करूंगा जितना मेरा सुएज है मैं यहीं पर उसको ट्रीट करके फिर से यूज करूंगा इस साल अगर आप सोचें कुछ हद तक जब प्रदूषण एयर पोल्यूशन का जो सवाल है वो काफी और वो रविश आप लोग राज आप सब लोगों ने उसको हाईलाइट किया है वो इसलिए भी हाईलाइट हुआ क्योंकि लोधी गार्डन में पोल्यूशन का लेवल सबसे हाई निकला था ये रियलिटी है ये ट्रूथ है और इसीलिए मैं एक पोल्यूटेंट है जो मुझे बहुत पसंद है मेरे कुलीग्स मुझे समझते हैं पागल हूँ मगर एक पोल्यूटेंट है ओजोन करके ओजोन निकलता है नाइट्रोजन डाइऑक्साइड से जो नॉक्स और अनुमिता मैं देख रही हूँ पीछे वो बिल्कुल मुझे सीधा करेंगी अगर मैंने कुछ गलती बोल दिया मगर नॉक्स you find NOx in polluted environments. So wherever there is very high pollution, you will find NOx, where there is diesel. But ozone is a secondary pollutant which escapes and finds places which are less polluted, which is why ozone levels are always higher in more greener and less polluted environments. So the good thing with air pollution is that it is a great equalizer. Environment is a great equalizer. But the fact also is that because we are creating such enormous differences between places which are so green, so good, where we have no knowledge of how the rest of the world lives, that we are actually becoming more and more intolerant. And that is why I, I chose, and I didn't choose, it was Richard who chose from my essay, uh, the issue of intolerance. Because I am, and that is the second point that I am more and more anguished about. I find that today we are more and more bubble wrapped 
इन द व्यूज वी वुड लाइक टू लिसन दैट इज ऑल वी वॉन्ट हम लोग जब पेरिस uh, गए थे अब की बार मैंने ऐसे लिखा था और प्लेन uh, में लिख रही थी uh, दिल्ली से uh, दिल्ली में उन दिनों बहुत इंटॉलरेंस टॉलरेंस की बात हो रही थी वही एक सवाल था मगर जब मैं प्लेन में थी और मैं सब कुछ पढ़ रही थी सी पेरिस में था मुझे खबरें भेज रहा था कि क्या हो रहा है क्या नहीं हो रहा है वहाँ पर और जब मैं प्लेन में सोच रही थी कि पेरिस जा तो रही हूँ मगर क्यों जा रही हूँ तो एक ही चीज़ मेरे सवाल दिमाग में थी कि क्या हमने किस तरह से दुनिया बदल दी कि पहले ज़माने में हम लोग एक एन थे दिल्ली में थे और जब हमने किताब निकाली थी ग्लोबल वार्मिंग एंड एन अन इक्वल वर्ल्ड अ केस ऑफ इन्वायरमेंटल कलोनियलिज्म 1991 की बात दैट बुक इट वाज हार्डली एन इंटरनेट एज एट दैट टाइम बट स्टिल दैट बुक शुक द वर्ल्ड इट वाज अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड बट टुडे वी हैव चेंज द वर्ल्ड कॉन्वर्सेशन इन सच अ मैनर दैट इट इज almost difficult if not impossible to get an inconvenient message out nobody wants to listen to it in paris it was unbelievable this time to see how any narrative which was inconvenient was not there at all countries which were seen to be raising any words of inconvenience whether it was the issues of equity or justice or any issue like that they were treated the 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 world press had been seconded by governments and the world press has become so powerful and that is what worries me today when i see the power of a few um media i mean particularly in india as well as abroad media which can actually change the discourse and in paris it was very clear when country like india even was seen was raising an issue of climate justice the very same day new york times carried this obnoxious cartoon showing india stopping obama's whole train of goodwill trying to change the world and here was this indian elephant standing in the tracks not allowing that train to move and you you demonize you ignore you basically treat anything which is inconvenient as a word that you do not need to listen to that is intolerance and the reason i choose to be tolerant is that we have to change this because this is the same intolerance that i am seeing in india today the issue of drought today is is it should scare us people across india are suffering because i have not heard of a drought like this i have traveled in the 80s when i have seen drought i have seen drought in the 90s but i have not seen the scale of devastation that i am seeing now scale of devastation because it is both the drought of the rich not just of the poor it is drought where people need and have requirements of much larger amounts of water it is also drought because it is combined with unseasonal rain with with the kind of uh, uh, weather changes that we have not even begun to understand that we are seeing to the extreme weather events and there is no information about it we do not read about it we do not hear about it the only time we heard about it briefly in the media was when the ipl debate was happening and i was very happy it was happening and i went on to channels and i said it should happen because at least we are beginning to see the real face of devastation in the country but that's the inconvenient truth that we do not want to come into our bedrooms we do not want to see those images anymore we are bubble wrapping conversation so in an information rich age we are knowledge poor and this is really why down to earth and i think down to earth has much greater role to play in the years to come than even the past because we have to make sure that we can put this information out we don't have the power of ravish but we have friends like ravish we have friends like raj we have friends like vivek we have to make sure that our words reach you 
that you are able to broadcast this, but that has to be our role, even in the past. And last thing, CB, that I want to talk about, that the biggest issue today on sustainability is what you talked about, decentralization. But decentralization also requires you to seriously give power to local communities and seriously listen to them even when what they are saying is not going to be as convenient. Today, the saving grace of this country in the future is going to be what I call NIMBY. Not in my backyard. Mere backyard mein nahi. Ab sabse achhi cheez jo ho rahi hai, pehle ye hota tha ki not in my backyard hota tha, jo abhi Ravish ne kaha nahi batai. Ki Bhopal ke loog jahaan unka backyard hai, wo keh rahe, isko to smart hai, isko ab aap kyun ho jaar rahe hai, ye mera backyard hai, aur power hai, chief minister tak pahunch sakte hai, unki sunwai ho jati hai. मगर जो नॉट इन माई बैकयार्ड जो गरीब का बैकयार्ड है उसके अंदर आज तक हम लोग कचरा फेंक सकते थे आज तक हम उसको पोल्यूट कर सकते थे आज तक उनका गंदा पानी उनका पानी गंदा था मगर जो सबसे मुझे लगता है अच्छी चीज और विवेक ये देखने लायक चीज होगी क्योंकि गरीब अब गरीब रहेगा गरीब है मगर उसकी आवाज भी है और अगर जो मैंने पहले कहा हम लोग उस बबल रैप को थोड़ा हटा सकते हैं और आवाज आगे बढ़ेगी तो जो हमारा सस्टेनेबिलिटी का नोशन है पूरी तरह से बदल जाएगा हमारी एक और किताब आ रही है जो है नॉट इन माय बैकयार्ड जो अब की बार हमने सॉलिड वेस्ट पे काफी अध्ययन किया है और जो सबसे अच्छी चीज मुझे निकली लगी वो है केरेला की कहानी कि केरेला के अंदर शहर का जो कचरा है जहां वो डाल रहे थे वहां गांव वालों ने कहा नॉट इन माय बैकयार्ड आज तक अब वहां डाल रहे थे नॉट इन माय बैकयार्ड और दो औरतों की कहानी है एक सीपीआईएम जो शहर की है और कांग्रेस यूडीएफ जो अब हार गए मगर तभी भी वो गांव की सरपंच थी गांव वाले सुप्रीम कोर्ट तक हार गए थे सुप्रीम कोर्ट तक क्योंकि कोर्ट कोई भी यह मानता है कि अगर वेस्ट डिस्पोजल है तो जहां भी जमीन चाहिए वहां मिल जानी चाहिए मगर अगर गांव ने छोड़ा नहीं और कहा नॉट इन माय बैकयार्ड आज शहर के पास कोई और उपाय नहीं है कोई और विकल्प नहीं है उनको अपना वेस्ट अपने आप मैनेज करना पड़ेगा और अपना वेस्ट मैनेज करने के लिए उनको मिनिमाइज करना पड़ेगा सेग्रीगेट करना पड़ेगा कॉम्पोस्ट करना पड़ेगा रिसाइकल करना पड़ेगा तो अगर ये चीज बढ़ती है डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन से कंट्रोल से और वॉइस से तो जो सस्टेनेबिलिटी का नोशन है वो भी बदलेगा वो इसलिए बदलेगा विवेक कि वो फिर बहुत जो हमारी रियलिटी है उसके लिए बना बन जाएगा तो मुझे लगता है कि और नॉट टॉलरेंस हमें रखना पड़ेगा और इसीलिए why I should be tolerant in my view is an apt title because we cannot allow the intolerance of the rich dictate the way we design our new and our old world. Thank you very much. We have with us Raj Changappa, a veteran journalist and group editorial director of India Today Group. I'm sure Salik will respond to some of your propositions. Career sort of ran somewhat parallel, uh, converging only when it dealt with uh, environment, uh, which thanks to uh, magazine journalism and the fact that uh, print publications couldn't afford specialists, we all did everything else, including environment. So while I became the jack of all subjects and master of none, Sunita, of course, with along with Anil, pioneered environmental journalism and in-depth investigation into some of the key issues of development, especially when you look at uh, housing, energy, water, sanitation, health, and the overarching issue of governance. You will find all of that in this book all our experiences across the years. 
Uh, to me, I think the most important thing is, uh, as a fellow journalist, is that her ability to simplify complex issues and make it human and understandable to vast cross-sections of the country. If doing this, I think uh, making the complex simple is the work of a genius. And in that respect, Sunita is a genius in terms of environmental issues. Her work on air pollution, I recall, um, and uh, in Delhi, uh, saw the government make major changes. And though uh, we may have deferred with the solutions that she offered, it certainly did make an impression on all of us. And if you look across the book, uh, the work she did on pesticides, when I say she, I mean the Center of Science and Environment, uh, as a team that put together the cola battle, uh, and more recently the carcinogenic substances found in bread. These are all very, very important topics and have spread widespread, I mean, have spread awareness across the country. I think she can also do things with, uh, when I met her, she said, why don't we discuss shit? <laughs> And uh, she can make us think about excreta in ways that we never thought before. And we may have forgotten this. There were many lessons we used to learn as we did environmental journalism about how to conserve water. But if you read one of her essays in the book where she talks of uh, how much water we flush every time we go to the toilet. And then when you think of how it mounts up uh, and adds up, not only just to the amount of water we waste, but the pollution we create and which in, in, in turn, sort of, you can see it in Delhi, the Yamuna, uh, the filth we throw into our rivers. So I think, Sunita, what she does is her ability to take the micro, which is uh, personal in many senses, and then transport it or uh, give it a macro perspective, which makes us all sit up and think. Uh, when she talks about cars, and I think she's been a, uh, it, particularly with air pollution, uh, when you look at it, she breaks it down very simply. And in one example I just wanted to give, when she says that the, every car that we buy has five costs, one for building the road, two for maintaining it, three for local air, uh, local air pollution and health issues uh, involved in it, four the cost of congestion, and five the cost of parking space. I mean, it's the first time you actually get a sense when you buy a car, you think, oops, I never thought of all these things that I'm doing to the environment when I do this. Uh, I agree with... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what uh, CB said about uh, Sunita when she says that why she needs to be tolerant, in many of these issues you do get up and you feel not only you should be intolerant, but we should all stand up and act. Uh, reading her book, I also realized it was a kind of tour de force of all the environmental issues that we dealt with, uh, that the problems we discussed in the 80s and the 90s and 2000s still exist with very little new solutions. And many of us who then drifted to other subjects uh, because, as I said, of the needs of our profession and to earn our own <laughs> bread and butter, uh, is that, uh, uh, you know, we thought that some of these problems would be sorted out, that governments are there, there's civil society that's there, and someone will come across and find and take care of all these problems. But I guess it's a bit like ignoring a lump uh, in your own body and thinking that somehow it will go away, it's not cancer. But as you get along, you find it's malignant, and then you have to do drastic surgery when you could have much earlier got away with chemotherapy or less drastic measures. So I think part of the problem in India that we see and in the rest of the world is that we do not, we think everybody else will solve the problem. We don't seem to participate fully in it. I, I, I think that that's where the Center for Science and Environment and Sunita's work and Anil's work has differed, is they are not allowing the others to do it. It's not someone out there who will do it, but they've taken on these courses and they've done really good work with surgical incisiveness um, and, uh, you know, in terms of hauling up governments and officials to take action. Uh, Sunita has dealt in this book, mm -hmm. The A to Z of Environmental Issues, asking troubling questions, challenging, challenging the established order of thinking, and demanding a, a new, more the word you hate, sustainable order. <laughs> uh, the larger message that I see from Sunita's work is that we, uh, it almost sounds like the police and the army, but we must always be constantly on our vigil. We certainly need better regulation. We need to question all the assumptions uh, that are, and never to take anything gr for granted. Particularly was struck by the fact when I was reading the, the, her essay on honey, and since I come from Kurk, 
uh, which is known for excellent honey. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize that a lot of this now was being, uh, you know, imported. Uh, imported. Mm -hmm. The European bee came and overtook the Indian bee, mm -hmm. and that is what uh, is now. And then the problems of that is that because they're not acclimatized to the Indian mm -hmm. conditions, substitution meant that they were putting antibiotics to treat the bees, and that was somehow getting into us. I never thought it was that serious. And so I think it is these kind of things that she highlights, which makes us all sit up or stand up and think of this. If there is some issues that I would have thought uh, where the book lacks, and I realized when I spoke to her outside was that uh, this was a compilation of uh, the writings over years, but I would have liked to see more uh, uh, contemporary um, postulations on how the Narendra Modi government has handled the environment uh, on uh, when you're dealing with urbanization and governance, for instance, I thought uh, your assessment on how the ARP government yes. is handling those issues would have helped. There's a sort of a, a somewhat deafening silence. I know whether it's deliberate or you've not written on it or you didn't want those <laughs> essays <laughs> uh, to be put in. Also, I would have liked to see, as we got along, while you highlighted all the issues, possibly a blueprint. Uh, yeah. Uh, for that horrible word, sustainable India, but uh, I think most important word that is there. Uh, what I like to end with is that uh, uh, we still have, as I mentioned, the big issues. Uh, they sort of stay back with us. Uh, the big cliches that we looked at when we covered environmental issues, you mentioned Rio. I, we were there together in Paris, and somehow they, it was like deja vu. Uh, you know, we were still talking about the South versus North, conservatives versus progressives, giant green versus gigantic business. Um, you know, Band-Aid versus drastic surgery. That's the great pity, I think, in environment, is that we are still sort of lost. And After three though there's lots of people optimistic mm. about the Par Paris Climate Change Agreement, <coughs> I'm not one of those. The title of uh, the cover that we wrote uh, for mm. India today was mm. Why the World Can't Save the Earth. Mm. I think that problem still exists. <laughs> exist. But my compliments to Sunita for this outstanding work that she's done. And I can see the popularity that you have, that for a book like this, you have an audience that's enormous. It's very difficult to get together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.